If we began with some really basic foundation understanding that we are energetic or spiritual beings as living in or inhabiting a physical container, then the energetic stuff, which we can look at as our energy field, the chakras, the meridians, um, the other elements which, which cultures have observed as either fields or caves, in ancient Chinese Taoist, there are three Dan Tian or Tan Den, um, which literally means crystal cave. The, the crystal of the upper crystal cave is an amethyst. The crystal cave of the heart is a rose quartz or an emerald. And the crystal cave in what people talk about as a Dan Tian is a, um, uh, a cinnabar, which is a mercury quartz crystal, which is this deep red brown cinnamon, like cinnabar, um, having to do with the vibrations, this being the coarser of the three. But we have all that stuff on the energetic side, and my whole work and my whole mission is to connect it to the physical, since we are inextricably physical beings. We may have spiritual energetic roots, but we have this physical grounding that has to be dealt with and satisfied for to understand how we can empower the energetic part, if that makes sense. Um, so at the end of the day, I cannot separate all of these energetic phenomena from the tissue phenomena that, that they're connected. And I'm not even gonna try to separate them, but look at them as holographic representations of the other. So we can't say one is higher up, one is lower down, one is coarse, because at one moment they are the same thing, one vibration expressed in two or three different ways. So when we think of this lower crystal cave, the lower Tanden or Dan Tian, um, it's this, as described by the ancient Taoists, probably influenced by the Tibetans, um, it is, this coarse vibrational red, um, even a reddish brown thing. But when you consider its physical relationship, you know, yeah, we have additionally the second chakra, which kind of coincides, an intake field, which by its design creates a cave as it pulls energy in. In my work, trying to understand how to empower and support healthy second chakra or healthy lower dantian energy, I find I cannot separate it from this big wedge-shaped plumb bone in the back called the sacrum. And I look at the bony sacrum, the corresponding energetic sacrum, which in the medicine traditions, they talk about the light body. And so for everything we have in our anatomy, we have the same corresponding thing in our energy body. So there'd be a bony sacrum, and there would be what the medicine traditions call a luminous sacrum. In health, it would be like a perfectly shaped little sacrum, and I wish I had one here, and I don't have one. Um, but it's kind of like hand-shaped, and the sacrum is an extension of the spine, it is five spinal segments that have been fused into a wedge-like structure that sits in the back of the pelvis. The seam between the middle two segments, the second and third segment, is apparently the place where the traditions have that the, the second chakra, which I would think we can make equivalent to the lower dantian, or tanden, um, anchors. So the energetic anchor is in the middle of the sacrum. So as I start to work with second chakra or dantian issues, I find that very often their root is manifested in the sacrum. And very often the sacrum is disrupted because the energetic, the luminous sacrum has been disrupted. So I, I, when I work with them, I make a little glyph in my, my notes where I put um, lower dantian, sacrum, luminous sacrum, all as the same thing. One, because they are the same thing, any disruption on either end of that continuum will throw the rest of them out. I can't restore the health of the lower dantian if the sacrum is deranged. I can't replace 
and restore health of the sacrum if the energetic sacrum is displaced and not superimposed and working with the bony sacrum, if that makes sense. And I can't separate the sacrum from the unit of function of how we bear weight. Our feet, our legs, our hips, our pelvis, the sacrum. So very often it's not uncommon if there's been a trauma to a leg or a knee or a strain of a leg or even a leg length difference, a weight bearing asymmetry that makes the pelvis asymmetrical, twists the sacrum, disrupts the fascial nest where the root chakra, the bottom chakra, and the second chakra, the lower dantian, should sit. They're distorted and they're compromised because the whole unit of bony engineering architecture has been collapsed and twisted. So you start to see that it's not such a simple thing, this lower tanden, but it's part of a much more vast unit of function that also, because of the way that the sacrum connects up the spine and into the base of the cranium, also includes the axis of the little diaphragms in the back of the head and the axis of the skull. So often if there's been a strain to the sacrum and a hit, it'll throw off the, the energy of the lower tanden, it'll extend the strain up the spine, create a twist and lock in the, in the base of the skull, and we can't get the second chakra, the lower tanden, back until the sacrum gets back. The sacrum won't go back until the strain that's locked up on the other half of it up here gets back. So the good news and bad news is that the sacrum is part of this really huge, vast unit of function, this network that interconnects almost everything. I mean, in my school, um, it's, a, it's a kind of a end of, it's a 10 class system. It's, it's class seven, you know, it's the seventh place. And we spend an entire week trying to understand what the unit of function of the sacrum is, which includes lower tanden which includes the luminous sacrum, which includes everything else I just talked about. And that we can't hope to say, you know, simply say, draw on lower tanden energy, mm -hmm, if all this other stuff won't participate in it, you know? Um, so, it just means that we can't, there's a thing that, 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 that philosophers talk about as reductionism, versus expansionism. So reductionism is when we make everything smaller, and so we take this vast complex system, we make everything, everything, everything smaller, 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 and here's a lower tongue den. So we treat it as if it's in a vacuum, in a body that's dead. You know, we ignore all this stuff. The other side of that is that we look bigger, 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 and we see the lower tongue den or dantian in the context of ever, ever larger units of function, where we look at it in the context of the whole body, based upon how the whole body is put together, how it works and what it requires to function. And the good news and the bad news is everybody's different. So the issues that you might have with lower tanden might be completely different than someone else. So there's no formula that I could say, ah, this is what you need to do to draw on your, you know, fortify, tonify the lower tanden because it may be the sacrum's jam. Might be childbirth has compromised it because the sacrum is the garage door of the birth canal. And when the baby's head drives through the canal, very often it, the garage door jams open and won't close. Therefore, the whole energetic relationship of the sacrum to luminous sacrum to lower tanden or, or, or tanden um, I go back and forth. Dan Tian would be the classical Chinese. Um, Tan Den would be the Japanese or Okinawan, yes. Um, so in that case, a physical trauma has taken out the resources that the lower Tan Den would require to be healthy and be drawn upon so that you can use it in practice. It is also the emotional center. So on an entirely emotional, spiritual vector, source. We could have an emotional trauma that is of a quality and magnitude that's greater than you can process, whatever your ability to process trauma would be. 
And in doing that, being subjected to a profound emotional trauma, it will blow out the lower tendon. In that case, the person may show up with sacroiliac pain. See the relationship? Here we've got an emotional source, spiritual source. Uh, my strongest reference for that is the time after September 11th, when almost no one had the uh, spiritual or emotional capacity to, to process the data of what happened downtown from here. Suddenly I had people coming back with physical symptoms that I had made go away years before, but none of the physical-based stuff that I was doing would make a difference. And after months and re visiting my paradigm and redefining what I did to include more of the energetic spiritual perspective, I realized that it was a second chakra blowout and the effect on the deep capacities of the body to heal and regulate itself that were preventing the sacrum from going back. So here we've got to satisfy the energetic part in order to get the physical part to go. But it's not until the entire unit of lower tendon energetic, luminous sacrum and bony sacrum um, correspond, come and sit where they belong, come and move the way they belong, breathe uh, with ki the way they belong, and relate to their neighbors and the whole body the way they're supposed to or designed to, that we can begin to access that energy in a healthy, healthy way. Okay, in summary, what does this all mean? It means that if there are issues involving lower dantian or tanden or second chakra, that it's not such an easy matter to, to, to just say like a formula, well, do these, you know, do 50 push-ups and you'll be fine. Do a bunch of sit-ups. Um, there are practices in ancient traditional cultures that will open that. Um, but the point number two is because everybody's different, and the relationship between energy and tissue that results in the tandem being compromised uh, is so complex that, um, that, like I was saying, there's no simple formula that somebody has to figure out um, the, ge the geometry, if you will, the, the, the complex interplay of forces that are the result of which is that your lower tandem um, is compromised, you have trouble accessing it. Um, for example, if the sacrum has been deranged, physically, lifting injury, a motor vehicle accident, um, it's going to be almost impossible for you to energetically access the lower tendon. Um, if there's a childbirth issue, uh, if there's been an emotional shock uh, that, that has blown out the energetic integrity of that, of that structure uh, and it's hemorrhaging energy, it's pretty hard for me to imagine that you can just do these exercises and, 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 and work that way. Um, and get it to function. Uh, so built into this is the need to understand that there's, you know, yeah, there, there are practices in acupuncture, there are practices in yoga, there are certain types of breathing that will help, and maybe to engage um, things that help a lot of people first, understanding that maybe you might not be one of the people that will be helped by that. And if that is the case, if you try one or two different types of exercises, um, you know, classically standing in low horse and wuji pose is, is one of the ways to open it. Um, there are qigong exercises that are about balancing, bathing, what is actually literally called bathing the three crystal caves. Um, those will work except when they don't. And when they don't, that's when we begin to think about, um, to worry about the relationship of the tanden to the sacrum, the relationship of the sacrum to the luminous sacrum, the relationship that they have to the cranial base, um, the diaphragms at the base of the, uh, of the chest, um, the weight-bearing mechanism, all that stuff. Um, I wish I had some definitive, uh, do this, you know, do 20 of these and they'll get better. Uh, and it's just not that simple. Um, not that hard to find practices that are designed to fortify and tonify lower tanden. Acupuncture could also be useful. Um, there's a practice called Mayan abdominal massage, uh, a little bit intense, but has, for some of my patients, profound benefit in helping people. Um, sometimes the visceral massage, visceral uh, release work, the physical therapist or myofascial release people can do will help. 
except when they don't. And that's when we begin to look at deeper underlying issues that might explain it. So I hope that makes it a little bit simpler. I mean, it's inherently complicated. It's a, it's a vastly complex web that extends from the tendon into the sacrum and into the whole body. Um, and there's no simple answer, you know. Okay. <laughs>